You guys ready to learn how to read and study the Bible? Let's get it. Hebrews chapter 3 is where we are. We're technically in verse 6. And if you know me in these Bible study walkthroughs, I love to start off with this. Read in context whatever passage you're on, whatever verse you're reading, read it in context. What that means is think about and read what comes before it and what comes after it and how this verse right here, the one that we're on, relates to what surrounds it. All right. So we have here, Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And in the last episode, we noted the differences and the similarities between Moses and Jesus because that's helpful to make sense of the main point of this, of this passage. And we are his house. So let me show you something. Sometimes when you read the Bible, you begin to improperly define an idea. So for instance, the first time I see the word house here, at least in chapter three, is in verse two, where it talks about how Moses was faithful in all God's house. Now, if I don't understand, you know, the Greek word that's used here and the context, I'll, you know, I'll preload this word with my cultural understanding of the word house as my dad's doing yard work. Fantastic. So, so I'll define this as like a structure, a building, a place of residency. Now, is that entirely inappropriate and wrong? Not necessarily, but what's being emphasized ab about this word house and what he's really noting doesn't come into play until he explicitly says in verse six that we are God's house. And if you didn't read ahead, you wouldn't know that. So sometimes you'll have to go back, you know, backtrack a little bit and go, actually, shoot, I made some conclusions that were based off a misconception or a, a wrong definition of an, of an idea or a word. So backtrack a little bit. And now that you understand we, as the people of God, are his house, the children of God, the family is what's in mind. Now I can go back, read those other verses with a proper understanding of the word house, right? And I might even go to the, a Greek lexicon and look up what the word house means and, and what it, you know, the original Greek word, uh, you know, meant and, and different contexts that this word is found in. And I might do that, but I just wanted to show you that sometimes you'll have to backtrack a bit. And um, now that you have a proper understanding of something, you go back and you kind of fit that into place. So sometimes you'll do that and that's okay. You have just had to be humble and recognize, shoot, I missed it, but thank God he corrected me. So we are his house if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting and our hope. Now, this word if, or let's just start with the word and, okay? I'm using purple for everything, so let me just highlight this in yellow. This word and is a connector. This sentence right here, we are his house. It relates to Christ being faithful over God's house as a son. Or this sentence, we are this phrase, we are his house, somehow builds upon or clarifies what it means that Jesus is faithful over God's house. So it might read like this, Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And, right, let me clarify what I mean. Let me expound, uh, expand on that idea. And we are his house. So essentially, Jesus is faithful over, over us. We're the ones he's faithful over. What does it mean that Jesus is faithful over us as his house? That's a question I have, right? So I, I'd probably, you know, write that down as a question. What does it mean that Jesus is faithful over us as his house? Or what does it mean that we are his house? I, I don't understand, you know? So this word and is a, is a connector. It's piecing these ideas together saying, hey, let me, let, let me tell you, they're related. They, de they depend on each other to some degree. We are his house. If, this word if triggers and frightens people if indeed we hold our fast or hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. So some questions I have, right, are, you know, what does it mean to hold fast our confidence? What does it mean to make our boasting in our hope? What is our hope? You notice how I'm asking questions here as, as a Bible student. This is what we do is we ask questions um, because we want to come to the right conclusions. We want to, you know, figure out what the text is saying. And sometimes that requires thinking through some things that aren't apparently clear in the text and, you know, thinking from a different angle and asking questions we, we haven't, you know, otherwise asked in other studies, you know? So start asking questions. That's one of the greatest tips I can give people is there's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, but that doesn't mean God will answer things uh, as quickly as you want. Sometimes it takes time to keep reading or read the rest of scripture or, you know, get in fellowship with other people. Um, but nonetheless, 
Um, it, this idea that we are his house is, is conditioned upon something. That's what this word if notes. It's a condition. You, you're his house. And you're like, yes. And he goes, whoa, hold on. If, right? So this is, this is what is true. And this is the condition, right? This is the, uh, the cause, you might say, if, if you read it like that. Uh, we hold fast our confidence and our boasting and our hope. And this if notes, hey, and, and we're his house if that takes place. And so let me backtrack. I, I don't think cause and effect is, is the right terminology to use. Rather, what I believe is going on here is that we are his house we don't become his house by holding fast and by, you know, boasting in our hope. Otherwise, that would be doing something to actually become children of God when the Bible says we're saved through faith. So let me show you what I do when I read the Bible. I have enough understanding of the gospel to know, and maybe some of you do as well. I know enough about the New Testament to know that God saves us through faith. It's a gift of his grace, okay? Because I know that, that understanding helps me make sense of what's being said. Someone could read this as, hey, we are his house. If you do these things, you become his children. And then you go, well, is that what it's saying? Well, hold on. Scripture confirms scripture. So when you read the Bible, use the rest of scripture. Use the rest of what you know about the Bible to confirm and verify what conclusions you're coming to about a text. So if I think this is saying I, I become his house, on the condition of holding fast my confidence and boasting in my hope, that flies in the face of the clear passages in the New Testament that say we're saved through faith, not by works, not by doing. Faith is, a, you know, something that is uh, trust. It's trust, it's belief, you know. It's not something, there's no holding fast and boasting in hope to become. Actually, this if notes uh, what will be true of someone if they're his house. So it reads like this, and we are his house if... This is your life. So instead of doing this to become his children, the, the fact is you are his children if these things end up being true in your life. And so it's, a, it's I am already if these things are, you know, end up being true in my life. Now, this doesn't mean you can't know you're saved, and I don't want to get into like a sermon here, but I'm just trying to help you make sense of when you come to like passages that seem startling and, and uh, confusing at first, think about what the rest of Scripture says. Let Scripture confirm Scripture, and maybe look up in the Greek what it means to hold fast to something, what it means to boast in our hope. What is our hope? And you go, I don't, I don't really know. Well, think about this. In Hebrews chapter 1, 2, and 3 so far, have we seen the word hope at all? If we have, I will bet that the author of Hebrews has already defined this hope for us, and he's assuming we know what that is because he's explained it already, right? So this is how we work backwards sometimes, or we keep reading. And if I don't see it up to this point, then I keep reading until I make sense of what this hope is, right? So again, this says we are his house if indeed, right, this is true of us because this is what will happen for someone who is a part of the house of God, not to become a child of God, okay? So verse seven is where we get now. It says, therefore, and I'm gonna draw some squiggles around this. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, so when you come to a word therefore or a word like this, for because what's being what's happening here is this is a conclusion um, or a reinforcement of what he said rather not a conclusion scrap what I said I was going the wrong direction with that therefore as the Holy Spirit says the Holy Spirit is about to say something or the author rather is quoting what the Holy Spirit says see the quotations right here so what we have here is a quotation from the Old Testament the author of Hebrews has selected this passage and he's saying this is what the Holy Spirit says and it's going to reinforce this idea that we are his house, right? If this is true of us, right? Um, this is a characteristic of someone who is a child of God. They hold fast their confidence and boast in their hope, right? Therefore, what I'm about to, to quote is going to prove that. This word therefore tells us uh, gives us almost like proof or reasoning behind a statement he previously made, right? Therefore, or in conclusion, sometimes the word therefore can act like that. 
in conclusion, here's what we do. But this is, is more of a here's the reason or the proof why I can say this. As the Holy Spirit says, today if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as in the rebellion. And this is going to be one long quotation we'll get into in the next Bible study walkthrough. But for now, I want you to think about um, this call to not harden your hearts when you hear God's voice as in the rebellion, which means there's a similarity or a, an example being put forth. Don't be what they were in the rebellion, which seems to be hardening hearts when they heard his voice. And he's saying, don't, don't do that. Now, what I want you to do is think about how this idea of hardening hearts when you hear God's voice and not being a rebel, think about how those ideas relate to being the, the children of God or relate to uh, holding fast our confidence or relate to boasting in our hope, right? Or relate to being the house of God because this word therefore is connecting what he's about to say to the ideas he's already put forth in the previous verses. Does that make sense? So sometimes what I do is I go back, I look at some key ideas that stand out that are, you know, uh, key to his argument or his point, and then I'll connect those to what's being said uh, in the following verses and go, what, is there any connections I see? Uh, have I seen these specific words already? Like, you know, words that you don't see every day, like rebellion or hardening or harden. Have I seen these words so far in Hebrews? Because sometimes the author has already explained what these words mean. We just didn't see it. And then we approach a text like this and we define these words improperly or think they mean something they don't. All right, so don't do that. Make sure you uh, meditate on the scriptures. Backtrack if you have to, to make sense of ideas that the author might have already explained. That way you don't come to wrong conclusions. All right, so if you didn't already know, we have a completely free 40-day Bible study program. 40 days. It's self-paced. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. Uh, You can go as deep as you want. It's really going to teach you how to study and read the Bible uh, effectively, help you develop skills along the way. You will go deep. So if you're ready for that, go ahead. But if you're not, we have a 27-day program and an 11-day program if 40 days is too much for you. If you don't want to be like Jesus in the wilderness or Moses on the mountain, I get it. We have other programs you can take. That's linked in the description below, and it's also on our website at abovereproachministry.com. All right, Uh, see you guys in the next Bible study walkthrough.